In this lecture, we're going to do uh, some examples of electrolysis of aqueous solutions. We have previously studied uh, some rules of how to do electrolysis of uh, solutions that are in aqu uh, that are aqueous. Uh, so, starting off, our first example is going to be we're going to do uh, the electrolysis of aqueous MgSO4. So, we have MgSO4 and it's in aqueous state. That means it's dissolved in water. So we're going to draw a beaker again. We ha will have a beaker. So this is a beaker. And there would be two inert electrodes dipped into this. So remember, we're doing the electrolysis of these aqua solutions using inert electrodes, which are made from graphite or platinum. And uh, these electrodes are connected to a battery so this is the right hand side is the negative terminal so this is the negative terminal this is called uh, the cathode and the battery is going to provide electrons from this side it's going to be pushing electrons to this electrode on the other side this one is the positive terminal this is called the anode and the battery is pulling electrons from this side. Now we're doing the electrolysis of MgSO4 aqueous, so our electrolyte, our solution contains the two ions. One is Mg plus two, and Mg plus two is going to get because it's positively charged, going to get attracted to the uh, negative uh, terminal. And then there's SO4 minus two ion that's going to get attracted to the positive terminal because it's a negative ion uh, and lastly since it's aqueous we're going to have two ions coming from water as well one would be H plus one and the other one would be OH minus one so H plus one is going to get attracted to the negative terminal so H plus one goes towards the cathode and OH minus one gets attracted to the anode now now we've drawn this rough diagram and we have uh, seen how uh, MgSO4 gets ionizes and it splits into its ions. Mg plus 2 goes to the cathode, SO4 minus 2 goes to the anode and H plus 1 and OH minus 1 come from water. H plus 1 goes to cathode and OH minus 1 goes to anode. Uh, now we're going to see what's going to happen at the cathode. So let's uh, start off with the with our cathode. Now uh, remember what we've discussed previously. The cathode is, uh, the battery is giving electrons to the cathode and any ion that reaches cathode is going to try and gain electrons. So it's always, uh, cathode would always be trying to gain electrons which in in chemistry terms is called reduction. The ions at cathode would try and gain electrons. So we have two candidates. One is Mg plus 2 and the other one is H plus 1. So we have these two candidates and they, they are competing for the electrons that are coming from the negative terminal of the battery. Now, which one is going to gain electrons? I've previously, in a previous lecture, we've stated that the one that is less reactive gains electrons. So I'm writing that in brackets. We're going to look for the less reactive uh, species. Uh, we are competing the competitions between Mg and H plus 1. So we have, uh, we're going to go back and see, look at the reactivity series again. So this here is a reactivity series. You can see Mg is over here, whereas H plus 1 is over here. The ones on the right hand side of, of the reactivity series are less reactive. So it's H plus 1 that's going to gain electrons and Mg plus 2 is not going to gain electrons. So move, coming back, the equation at cathode would then 
turn out to be you'll have H plus 1 and that H plus 1 would then gain electrons that are coming from the battery so H plus 1 gains an electron and it forms H but remember H is diatomic so it would never exist as a single neutral atom it would always exist as H2 so you would need 2 H plus 1 and then there would be it would be gaining two electrons so that's your that's your equation at the cathode now we're going to move on and write down the equation at anode so at anode you have two species one is SO4 minus 2 and the other one is OH minus 1 now these two species they were all trying to lose electrons so they would try and lose electrons because the battery is pulling electrons away from them so they're going to try and lose electrons and in chemistry term losing electrons that's called uh, oxidation so they're going to try and get oxidized so oxidation would be happening over there but which ion would more readily lose electrons now previously when we when we are introducing this topic I said that it's always OH minus 1 that ends up losing electrons because it's easiest for OH minus 1 to lose electrons compared to all the other negative ions. Except there was one exception, and that was that Cl minus 1, if Br minus 1, Cl minus 1, or I minus 1 were present in concentrated amount. So if they're present in concentrated amount, then they lose electrons. But otherwise, in normal circumstances, it's always OH minus 1 that's losing electrons. And I told you to remember the equation for the loss of electrons and that was 4OH minus 1 I'm writing a balanced equation 4OH minus 1 which ends up losing 4 electrons and produces 2H2O plus O2 so you're going to see oxygen gas if I bring this down you're going to see oxygen gas being formed there's oxygen gas being formed in this equation. So you're going to see oxygen gas being formed at anode. And you're going to see hydrogen gas being formed at cathode. So these two are your equations. Uh, now one other thing that you need to do is you need to write down the overall equation and combine the two equations together to sum up what's happening at anode and cathode. So to write the overall equation, we have two equations. One is, let me underline the second equation. This is my second equation. So you had uh, one equation was this one. That's, uh, and this was my second equation. Now I'm going to simply add them up. The only difference is I need to keep the number of electrons gained. There were electrons being gained over here and there were electrons being lost over here. So they were two electrons being gained over there and there were four electrons being lost I need to keep the number of electrons gained and lost equal so what I do is I multiply this entire equation I multiply this by two so that would give me four H plus one plus four electrons which would give me two H2 so the, in that way the number of electrons gained and lost would become equal so I'm going to write down this equation now I'll, I'll add the left hand side and the right hand side of both equations so it would be 4 H plus 1 then there would be 4 OH minus 1 then there's plus 4 electrons and minus 4 electrons which cancel out so these two simply cancel out and on the other side I'll have there would be 2H2 plus there would be 2H2O and there would be 1 O2 so this is my overall equation for this reaction in this example we're going to do the electrolysis of KCl aqueous but the only difference now is that uh, this is concentrated and uh, we when we were studying electrolysis and explaining I'll explain I was explaining electrolysis there were some slight differences between uh, electrolyzing 
solutions that were concentrated and that had Cl minus 1, Br minus 1 or I minus 1 ions uh, in them. So let's proceed with the electrolysis. Let's draw a rough diagram. This is our beaker. It has two inert electrodes made from graphite or platinum dipped into it and these are connected to the terminals of a battery. The shorter terminal, that's the negative. So this side is our is our cathode and the longer terminal, that's the positive side of the battery. So this is our anode and uh, the electrons are going to be pushed, the battery would be pushing electrons from this side and it would be pulling back electrons from the other side and you you have this electrolyte, the electrodes are dipped into that electrolyte and that electrolyte is KCl, it's aqueous but the difference now is that it is also concentrated. Concentrated means that there's a lot more KCl and there's a lot less water in this. So let's uh, figure out what ions are present. Whenever KCl is aqueous, it breaks down into its ions. You'll have K plus 1. And since K plus 1 is positive, it's going to get attracted to the negative cathode. Then you'll have Cl minus 1. And since Cl minus 1 is negative, it's going to get attracted to the positive side or the positive electrode. It will get attracted to the anode. Then there'll be two ions coming, since it's aqueous, there'll be two ions coming from water as well. One would be H plus 1, and since it's positive, it's going to get attracted to cathode, and you'll have OH minus 1, which would get attracted to, uh, which will get attracted to anode. Now, uh, moving on, uh, let's write down the equation, what's going to happen at cathode first. So I'm going to write down what's going to happen at cathode. Now cathode attracts which ions? It's, it's attracting uh, it's attracting K plus 1 and H plus 1. The positive uh, charge indicates that they both lack electrons. So they're going to try and reach over here and the battery is going to provide them with electrons. So they're going to try and gain electrons or in other words in chemical terms it's called reduction. So they're going to try and get reduced. So how do we figure out which one would get reduced and which one would get uh, which one would get reduced? Which one has a higher tendency to gain electrons? So we're going to go back and look at the reactivity series. So if I go back and if I look at the the activity series that we had previously studied, you can see that K is the most reactive element, whereas H is one of the least reactive elements. It's It has a low reactivity compared to potassium. The ones on the right are least reactive. So, and we discussed previously that's the less reactive one that would get discharged. So, in our case, the one H plus one would be the one that would be able to it would be able to gain electrons. So the equation for H plus 1 would be H plus 1 would gain an electron as it reaches cathode and it would form H and since H is diatomic, it will exist as a neutral atom, it would always be H2. So, in, so you would need two H plus 1 and each would gain one electron so there would be a total of two electrons being gained. So this is your equation at cathode. So this is my equation at cathode and let's move on and write down the equation at anode. Now the tricky part, the difference, uh, we, there's a subtle difference between the previous electrolysis that we done do, that we did in this one. We have two ions now which are reaching anode, one is OH minus one and the other one is Cl minus one and they're both trying to lose electrons the battery is pulling electrons away from them so which one when we were discussing this we i explicitly said that it's always oh minus one i'm going to rewrite that it's always oh minus one that ends up losing electrons but there was an exception and that exception was except when cl minus one 
br minus 1 or i minus 1 are present in concentrated amounts that means that in this case it's not OH minus 1 that's going to end up losing electrons it's uh, since the exception applies over here it's Cl minus 1 that ends up losing electron now Cl minus 1 has one extra electron so Cl minus 1 would end up losing so I'm going to subtract an electron and it's going to form Cl now Cl is also diatomic all of group 7 elements are diatomic they never exist as single atom so it would be Cl2 so you would need 2 Cl minus 1 and each loses one electron so 2 Cl minus 1 loses 2 electrons so that's my equation at anode so this is the difference that concentrated would make and to sum it, sum it up the overall equation would be let's write down the overall equation now the overall equation if you look carefully the number of electrons gained and the number of electrons lost they're both equal so since they're both equal I don't need to multiply any equation by any number they're already balanced the number of electrons gained and lost are balanced I simply add the left hand side and the right hand side so it's 2h plus 1 then it's 2 Cl minus 1 that's the left hand side plus 2 electrons and minus 2 electrons would cancel out and then I'm going to write the right hand side which is H2 plus Cl2 so that's my overall equation this reaction and if somebody asks, asks you about observations there would be a few questions about observations as well you have hydrogen gas being formed at anode so you had cathode and you have Cl2 gas being formed. I'm going to go back to the diagram. There's H2 gas being formed at cathode and there's Cl2 gas being formed at anode. So it's basically H plus 1 ions are escaping and Cl minus 1 ions are also escaping the solution. So what is left behind in the solution? It's K plus 1 and OH minus 1. So there are some questions on this as well. So KOH is the electrolyte, is the solution that is left behind at the end of the electrolysis.